opportunity to host this uh, uh, number 10 team in the nation here this, uh, this weekend. Well, we're excited. They're good. Their first two pitchers are really good. Um, so it'll be fun. Yeah, we'll kind of be tested right away in the American Conference with the uh, – I think everybody would probably agree they're the team to beat. So, yeah, it should be exciting. With this uh, Friday night starter, is that Verstoven? Am I saying his right? Their guy? Yeah. Yes, Savage. Yes, Savage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, big right-hander. Uh, yeah. What, what, kind of, team USA. what kind of stuff does he uh, bring? It's good. It's 93. It's every bit of 93 to 97 miles an hour. Um, four, to four pitches. He got two different breaking balls. He's going to throw the right handers a lot of sliders. Um, he's going to throw the left handers a lot of change ups, and he'll mix in some curve balls to both sides. But yeah, he's the real deal. I mean, he's a, everything I read and everything I see, he's a first round draft pick. Uh, he stays healthy. He'll probably pitch in the big leagues one day. So it's a wonderful challenge. Coach, speaking of Friday night starters, I've noticed the last couple of times for Robert Orlowski, y'all have used him more coming out of the bullpen after Fisher opens it up. Has the, And he's had good starts while doing that. Does that help, Robert? Is that something you guys might see going forward or still kind of playing around with it? He's starting tomorrow. Um, so sometimes we use an opener. You know, we've done that the last couple of years. Um, you know, with Ryan Ward not healthy, um, and Owen's scuffling a little bit Tuesday. I uh, just felt like we need Fisher in the bullpen. Fisher's been pretty reliable. You know what you're going to get out of Fisher. Um, so I didn't want to go with an opener tomorrow. But we'll do that some. We won't stop doing it. But tomorrow we won't. Tomorrow it'll be it'll be straight Rob from the get-go. Kind of seems like this season there's been a little bit of back and forth from the team. Some consistency things with either at the plate or on the mound. What is – how – how are you and the coaching staff trying to address that, and what would you think needs to – you can how you tune that up going into conference play? Yeah, we – at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to um, play good baseball, and it sounds uh, kind of vague, I guess, when you say that, but we, we define it, you know. For us, good baseball consists of throwing strikes at 62%. So it's a clear, clear definition where it starts. We try to throw strikes at a, at a rate of 62% and walk uh, – one guy every three innings. That's what, that's the kind of first order of business when I say playing good baseball, the second order of business is the defense. So we try to have one error or less, that's good baseball. And then at the plate, um, it's a little more subjective what good baseball looks like. But for me, it looks like people that'll, that swing at strikes and take balls. And when they get to two strikes, they fight a little bit. So they don't, they don't uh, give in and go down easily. You might not get a hit if you fall behind 0-2, but um, just battle them a little bit. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we've tried to do uh, really since Coach Aguayo and I got here. It's still the recipe. A lot of new players on this team, so we've been a little inconsistent. Um, in the batter's box, that's part of the game. Hitting's hard. Uh, been a little – just here uh, Tuesday, I was a little frustrated with the pitching. I thought we could have pitched better. Some older people didn't pitch good. Who have pitched good? Um but you know, so we got to get that right, at, you know. Um, and then the defense a little up or down, up and down, and that uh, unfortunately comes with losing Walker a little bit. He's a terrific de defender. So if if uh, Isaiah is not in there, we're playing some people on defense that maybe are better suited for DH. <laughs> I noticed on Tuesday it seemed like pregame Isaiah was taking some reps and out in the infield a little bit. Is he on track with his timetable, and how's everything going with that and his recovery? Yeah, um, I think he is. I think he's on track. They haven't really um, – they've been a little hush-hush on exact timetable. I'm hearing a little bit of early April now. I think it's hard to tell, frankly. I don't think they've been hush-hush. I just think it's – with a hamstring, the initial diagnosis can take a little while before you know. So I don't – I just think that's hard to predict. But he is on track. He's working hard. The training staff is doing a great job working with him. Um, we hope to get him back, but – Again, we're we're growing and learning and getting better while he's not out there. People like Diego Diaz are getting a ton of experience. I didn't think Diego would get as many bats at bats the entire season as he already has, um, and he's played mostly well. He, um, so there's some positive to losing Isaiah, and that's the way we're choosing to look at it. Yeah, you know, Diego, he's had some big moments already, either in the field with his glove or even at the bat, like we saw Tuesday night. 
what does he bring as a true freshman to the field, and how have the guys helped him kind of get accustomed to <coughs> Division One baseball? The main thing he brings is speed. Um, he has that tool, and the, the beautiful part about speed, I don't know who said it, Casey Stingle or somebody, you know, speed speed doesn't slump, which means it, it speed shows up everywhere. Like, it, it, it's there. It's not like hitting where it comes and goes. So that's what he brings to the table first and foremost. And he's made a lot of improvement hitting in the box. He's still, he's not perfect, nobody is, and he's only a freshman, but he's come so far in such a short amount of time. He's got a couple homers, he beat Grand Canyon, and their Team USA starter with the triple or double he hit in the first inning. Um, I can't say enough good things about him. So we're gonna keep working with him. He's, he works extremely hard. He's only gonna get better. Again, it's not gonna be perfect, um, but he's been fabulous. But the speed is the one thing that's nice to see. Um, you know, we, we don't, we have some speed, but we also have some slow people. Um, so it's nice to have his speed. After, you know, the first month of the season, obviously entering conference play, do you and the coaching staff feel like the lineup is starting to solidify itself a little bit or still kind of moving around based on what matchups and, and whatnot? Um, a little of both. There's some, a little, some of it is solidifying like Diego. Uh, he's going to play more than he's not going to play. Even when Walker comes back, um, I do think Diego will still play most of the time. Uh, you know, people have to, con he needs to continue to play well, but I suspect he will. Um, but, you know, first and third base have been a little bit uh, different people over there, and I think you'll still see that, a little bit of a platoon. Um, when Walker comes back, you could see him at both first and third base. So the outfield is starting to take take shape a little bit um, with Odom um, mostly playing well. So it's three good defenders out there if you put Odom out there. Um, but we have other options too, so we'll see. When you when you have guys like Ty Odom and when Isaiah eventually, you know, hopefully comes back, it can take a little bit to get the rust off how do you yeah. help those guys stay patient as you know you have the game of baseball and the uniqueness with it but reminding them the good college baseball players that they are yeah we talk about it on the front end with with both Ty when he came back that it is going to take a little bit and with with Isaiah too it's going to take him longer with Isaiah because he's missed more time so mm -hmm. you know simulating the live pitching and facing 90 to 95 miles an hour in practice you just get you don't get to do it um, so the conversations on the front end, and then um, with Isaiah and the hamstring, you might need to rest him a little bit. We'll talk to the medical people, but with Odom and the shoulder, once he was good to go, they felt like he could go. Um, with Isaiah, we might need to play him and give him a day off just to see what that hamstring is doing. But Isaiah is also an older player. He knows there'll be some ups and downs. Um, so at the end of the day, though, again, with his defense, uh, when I say the ups and downs, I'm talking about in the batter's box. But with Isaiah's defense, um, he'll be in the lineup as long as he's healthy and, and it's, in, it's in the best interest of his health to put him in the lineup, he's going to be in that lineup because even if he doesn't hit, he can win the game for you on defense. Coach, we're going to talk to uh, Caleb and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mason a little bit. Uh, a little while. Can you kind of uh, address what they brought, what those kids have done for the team this year? Caleb's carried us. Uh, he's been, Mason's done great too, um, but Caleb is, is uh, kind of put us on his back, so to speak, and, and carried us. He's just been so good. I, I can't imagine, um, I couldn't have imagined he'd hit this well and get on base this well. So tip your hat to him. And, you know, really right now, from a coaching standpoint, we kind of uh, leave him alone. Um, you know, when I first started coaching, I had a coach tell me that, hey, if they're going good, you just leave them alone. And I played long enough to know, for the most part, we're leaving Caleb alone, making sure he's healthy. Sometimes on Wednesdays, he practices less because, uh, he, you know, he's a big guy, but he runs good and, and steals bases and his body gets beat up a little bit. So we're trying to just make sure he's rested more than anything. And he's a quiet guy. He just leads by example. Wonderful to have him. Mason stepped up. Yeah. Um, plays really good defense and again I, I knew uh, from a talent standpoint I knew he belonged on the field I just I didn't expect he'd hit this good it's hard to hit 350 uh, period and um, he's done it 
So, and he's hitting the clutch a little bit too, which is nice to see. And he runs the base as well. That's, it's hard to find that kind of at the mid-major level, the guy that can defend, that can hit for a little power and can steal a base. And those two guys can do all that. So we're very excited to have him. Usually you'll find a guy that can hit a little bit, but maybe he's doesn't have the foot speed or the defense, but Hill and Lytle can do a little bit of everything, which is nice. You're talking about the, a minute ago that you know, speed doesn't slump. Uh, I just, you know, sometimes I watch Mason when he gets down the line. It's just, yeah. It puts pressure on the infield. Yeah, we talk about that a lot, and that's what East Carolina is going to do. Other than their catchers, uh, they really get down the line, so they'll hit a lot of chopping ground balls. They try not to pop up. They got a few guys that are sluggers too, but probably six of their guys are kind of that type of guy that's just kind of kind of flatten out their swing, and they're going to put some pressure on your infielders to make the plays cleanly. But that's what you're referring to with guys like Lytle. At, at this level of play, um, it, it's really effective. Yeah. I was uh, talked to uh, Alma and, and, uh, and Dan earlier about the uh, just the uh, I don't know if it's any kind of a trend or anything, but just over the course of time here at UTSA, we've seen some uh, tremendous center fielders here at the Bird Bath from the Houston area. I'm talking about the Rockets, mm -hmm. both Rockets. I get Shane uh, was an outstanding player. Just, yeah, they just uh, there's just a lot of them. Yeah, there, aren't Ma there? Mason. Is carrying on that, right, that right. torch, yeah. yeah. So I hadn't made that connection. Of course, I didn't coach uh, the Rocket kid, but Coach Serdashny was a terrific center fielder that could run and hit a little bit. And Mason falls right into that category. He's also from Houston. So yeah, hopefully we keep that going. In your uh, 2020 Dylan Rock, what position did Dylan play? Mostly right field. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Still Serdashny some. Um, Tappy actually played out there a little bit. Yeah. 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 And there's, uh, there's all kinds of talent over there in that area. You just yeah. get a, <laughs> you find a shortstop or a center fielder just about anywhere you look. Yep, yep. When I was at Rice, we used to sometimes, we'd say look no further than our own backyard to go find the players. Yeah, right. all over Texas though. That's why I love I love it here. That's why I came back here. I've said that multiple times. From, from Corpus right through San Antonio and Austin, over to Dallas, down to Houston. If you just recruited that area right there, you would do you would do just fine. Yeah. You know, and I was going to. Uh, Uli, I think was uh, was going to come talk to us as well. Uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about what uh, you saw out of him in his last uh, start and just kind of how he's doing? Well, he's healthy. Uh, you know, he had a little bit of a hamstring early in the year, um, but it looks like he's healthy now, and the pitch counts built back up. So he was typical Uli, really just throwing the fastball and the breaking ball for a strike. Um, and, and he throws hard, you know, both pitches are fairly hard. Even the breaker is hard. So um, he, he really just kind of overpowered those guys. I think this week he might need a third pitch uh, with all of East Carolina's left-handed hitters. They're going to have seven left-handed hitters in their lineup. Might have more, but probably seven. And um, they can get to the fastball. They can get to the hard stuff. So you need to slow them down a little bit with something slow. Um, you know, backdoor curveballs, change-ups. Uh, but Uly you, you knows what he's doing. Yeah, he'll, he'll be ready. Have you set your rotation for the weekend? Or Orlowski and Friday and Uly uh, Sunday. I don't. We don't know who's going to go Saturday. Saturday yeah. 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 Coach, getting back to the pitching for UTSA <laughs> and a little more of the sabermetrics for East Carolina right now. They're hitting just 299 as a team, but their BABIP is a little higher, 333. Knowing that, that they're when they do make contact, it's it's finding the holes. Do you guys look at that at all? Do you kind of advance scout with that at all, or how do you approach those stats? Uh, we don't look at, at batting average ball and play too much. We look a lot at just team team hitting, on base percentage, walk to strikeout ratio, which gets into some of what you're describing, and they're really good at that. They'll, they'll uh, make you throw pitches if you're not throwing strikes. They like to bunt, uh, they like to safety squeeze. <laughs> they do a terrific little play where they, with some of their down in the order hitters, second and third, they they double suicide. So both kids will run. The guy at second and the guy at third will immediately steal, counting on the batter to bunt it. And it's a really interesting play because if you pick up the bunt and throw to first, the kid on second will score. If you don't pick up the bun and throw to first, 
the guy that bunted it will be safe and the other guy stops at third. So it, it's a great little play, um, but there's ways to stop it. Uh, you got to defend the play before it starts a little bit um, with some pickoffs to the bases, things like that. Um, but I love that kind of baseball. It's super interesting. Coach Godwin's a terrific coach. Um, but that's how they play. That's what you're getting at. Uh, they really run good. They're going to hit a lot of ground balls and put some pressure on you besides Cunningham and the right fielder that hits right behind them in the three hole. And then the catchers who are just not great runners. But the rest of them play this type of game, which is it's a fun game. It's not always fun. <laughs> Uh, playing against it, but if you defend well, um, you can defend it. You got to defend well, and you got to be ready for it. If you're not ready for it, it'll catch you off guard. But um, I do appreciate it, and I do enjoy that style of baseball. Yeah, that's a pretty aggressive. Is that sort of emblematic of their style? Oh yeah, well? that's how they play. Yeah, they want to run the bases, borderline uh, too aggressive, like we do. Uh, they they love the you know I don't know you you guys have probably noticed. Often we try to score on a ground ball with one out or two outs, not with no outs, but a ground ball on the infield with a man on second, sometimes we'll try to score him. Um, two years ago against La Tech, it got me. La Tech in the conference championship game, uh, I, we, I got us thrown out on that play. I still, and we lost a game by one run. <laughs> I still think back to that play, but we've scored so much like that, that you just weigh the, you know, sometimes you got to take the risk, but anyway, uh, Coach Godwin plays, he runs the bases the same way. Yeah, so it's fun. It is fun. And if you're ready, you can pick up outs. You can mm -hmm. pick up outs. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully the weather uh, cooperates and uh, we get some good crowds out here. I think it is. Today's a little man, but I think the weekend's going to be okay. Have you all heard different? It, it looks like to me, for, to be good. sunny yeah. tomorrow and partially Sunday. Hopefully not as long as last weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>